Uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, this is Jerry from DMI, and uh, now we are going to start our level B training for DH seventy six. Totally, there are six parts from the installation SOP, and uh, second is the measurement principle. Third is the hydraulic system. Fourth is hardware. Fifth is the maintenance. Maintenance. And the last is the our most difficult one, sharp shooting. So here uh, the f we are focusing on the hydraulic system, number six and the number three and the number six. Why? Because they are most uh, difficult. If we understand the hydraulic system, we can do sharp shooting much more uh, easy. For the installation, that is the standard. So we we just follow it. And uh, you can follow in the step one, from, from step one to step two, step three. So it's the standard. So we no need to introduce too much. Measuring principle is um, for for study. For when we doing the training, maybe some doctor will be asking, uh, what's the principle of your uh, hematology analyzer? So for this process, uh, is uh, just uh, something uh, common, common acknowledge. Okay, maintenance is also also the uh, uh, SOP standard of standard operation process. So so we can do the we can we have the standard. Where where is the standard for the maintenance? From you can get our service kit. So when you open the inst instruction of the service kit, uh, you will find all the SOP uh, from uh, how often and we do that uh, maintenance and uh, what parts should be to do cleaning or to do some replacements like the uh, filter, like the oil, like the some oiling or something else. So for the number one and the number five, we have the SOP. Number four is also for um, for replacement. When we when we are going to replace the hardware, especially for the main board and uh, for the laser, for the two parts, we must uh, turn off the machine and uh, wear the anti-static risk uh, strap uh, belt. That one is very important. Why? Because every uh, every engineer when they visiting the uh, end user, there are many uh, there are many uh, uh, the grounding voltage from his hand is very high, more than much much higher than uh, maybe ten volt or maybe uh, twenty voltage, especially uh, for those area where uh, they have very low humidity. For example, in uh, in the Dubai or in some uh, Saudi Arabic or maybe in some uh, Africa, North Africa, the air and the environment, the temperature is high and the humidity is very low. So the main board and the laser very easy to be broken just uh, by the, uh, just if they are not wearing like uh, a belt. So remember, uh, number four is very uh, uh, important okay first one before we are visiting the uh, customer sites uh, we should uh, get the information from the customer like uh, and uh, and also familiar with the manual related to the machine so my suggestion is if you have a new engineer uh, make sure they all of them are qualified and they have they have practiced many times at office. For example, uh, this is a new machine, right? This is a DH seventy six. It's it's your first time. This is a new, totally new product uh, for your company. So what do we suggest to do? We suggest to do practice at office. Open the machine uh, by and the name after we open it and do the installation okay successful then we put everything back to the inside of the box then ask another engineer to do it again make make sure all of your engineers they are 
qualified can do the installation alone. So uh, this is very necessary. And um, if not, some of your engineer maybe have trouble, maybe broken. Where where is the place very easy to broken? Auto loader. And uh, the some uh, some uh, some share some plastic share easy to broken or missing some place or forget to do some setting. They they don't know how to do the installation of software or something else. So do the practice. Sorry, read the manual first and do the practice. Uh, once, uh, one time, uh, two times, and a third times. More the more is better. So this is my suggestion. We here here in China, in China, in even in Europe, we have some uh, or South America or Asia, all those uh, very perfect company, very uh, successful distributors. They 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 have this training, and they they request all the engineers must be qualified, and they must can do the installation alone. Okay. So also confirm next. Okay, so continue. Confirm with the customer if the computer and the printer uh, they already prepared. Why? Because in our DH76, there is no computer, no printer. The computer and the, and the, the printer should be prepared by the end user. Or maybe in your country, you, you, uh, you also providing or selling this uh, product. Okay. So the differences between DH seventy six and uh, between the DH thirty six, what's the different? The DH thirty six we have same printer, right? Same printer is inbuilt, so uh, they can this they can do printing. But for DH seventy six, uh, you, we can install we can install any kind of the um, uh, driver software driver printer driver for for it. So, um, because the system is a Windows system, but for the DH thirty six DF fifty, they are we are using the li Linux system. So not all the printer, not all the external printer are acceptable by the by those by the those machines. But here in DH seventy six, uh, we don't have such uh, issues. So, okay. Next, we also have to connect the list engineer. Here, uh, one thing very important: if the end user they pref they are going to have a list connection, make sure the computer should be very uh, special. Why? We must have the two LAN port for. Uh, so, for example, you know the PC we have a main board, right? And uh, not, but that's not enough. Why? Because that port we are connected to the uh, machine analyzer, but we need another port, LAN port, to connect it to the um, the serv the server, the server uh, place. So, minimum we need the two LAN port. The label, the port, the name of the port is RJ45, right? So that is the net, net so we using the net cables to do the connection. So very important, before we doing the installation, call the end user, call our customer, whether they have laptop, sorry, whether they have PC uh, display, whether they have printer, whether they need the least connection. If they need, if they need the least connection, we have to uh, make sure the, the PC is uh, have two LAN ports. Okay, <coughs> this is very uh, important. And after that, uh, we have to make sure uh, to prepare uh, some m m tours by our engineer, right? Like a multimeter, work clothes, tour bags and uh, something else okay number four number four confirm the date of installation and the transport and the transportion uh, to the customer side why we needed to check 
check the date. For what? For saving the cost of your company. If if they if when you after your engineer after your field engineer arrived the hospital, they are saying, we 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 are not going to install it today. We we have to wait in for three days or four days. Then what to do? It will it will bring uh too much uh some some too much travel cost for your company, right? And maybe you have some other customer to visit. So make a plan, and uh, generally, uh, generally in China uh, we are using our CRM system, right? In China we are doing, uh, we can send any engineer close to this hospital. So so the engineer is not fixed. Maybe in this area we have five engineers. So so these engineers they are doing the uh, they are doing the maintenance. Uh, as scheduled, and also maybe doing the repair um, by customers' call, right? So, and if the engineer is close to this hospital, we will call him to visit the library. To for what? For saving the cost and saving the time. Engineer just uh, keep uh, keep traveling along the, the city. Okay. Number five. Double confirm the details with the person in charge before departure. So, so all these things is very important. Second, machine confirmation. Uh, as we mentioned, after we open the box, right, we have to check the the paper. This paper is the checklist, and uh, we should open it and find the reagent. Check if we have the reagent here, like uh, last one, LYA one, LYA two, LYA three, and the diluent DILA, and a uh, cleanser. For the DH seventy three, the there's no LYA one, but LYG one, so that is different. So make sure you are using the uh, uh, DMI reagent. And also, uh, we have to uh, for the first uh, border for for the first border of the region, that is, there is no IF card and a half border. Remember, no IF card for the first border. Why? Because this uh, this region is only for installation. They can the end user they can use the free of cost. Or maybe you can you can you still can charge it, but uh, here, uh, in 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 China or but we also but uh, every uh, every uh, distributor, uh, they when they open this box, they have half border, free, uh, free of scanning the IF card. Okay. But the diluent diluent is not a half border. That is a full border and with RF card. Only the last A one, last A two, last A three, and the cleanser. <coughs> uh, we have that, that is half water. Cleanser is f uh, fifty micro liter. And the uh, second is check the printer. All mods are support supported. This, uh, if we are going to do the list connection, the end user they have to con con contact the list engineer. Why? For what? For the IP setting, and for the cable connection, and also some setting. Where for our engineer, for DMI engineer, we have to provide the list protocol. The list protocol, uh, we we have that is the same. Uh, only only two kinds of list protocol. One is for human. One is for uh, animal. So. Generally, for DH seventy six, this is for human uh, hematology, right? So we so we provide the one um, similar like DH uh, same like uh, DH thirty six and uh, DH fifty. Next is the control materials. Why we have to take the control materials for what? For for make the doctor 
believe that the DMI machine is good machine. Why? Why this control is very uh, because the control is the standard to uh, to check the repeatability, to check the precise, and also to check the um, uh, result, right? And also to check something uh, some errors, some others. So generally, there are three level of the control: low level, normal level, and high level. They can they can do some test, uh, maybe low level, maybe high level, or maybe normal level, and also check the CV. So in case the doctor uh, challenge our machine, we can use the counter to make them believe our our machine. Uh, if possible, if possible, we also have to bring the calibrator uh, when visiting. Why? Because sometimes the result is a little higher, but a stable. Yeah. For example, after ten times checking, the result is uh, a little high, just uh, always high. So we can do the we can use the calibrator to lower down the result. Next is the ground cable. If there is a special round ground cable with grounding, uh, we need to use the grounding cable and connect it uh, uh, in the library. Uh, how to check the ground voltage? This is uh, you can find this video from our uh, FTP or from YouTube. Uh, we can use the multimeter and then check the grounding voltage. Okay, very important. Otherwise, machine will be damaged, especially the laser and the main board. And uh, once you find the ground voltage is higher than five voltage, do not install it. Otherwise. This is manual damage. DMI will not uh, provide a warranty for this. Okay. Power. Last one is the power. Check the voltage. If the voltage is stable in this area, uh, more or less ten percent. That means uh, it's acceptable. If not, we have to install a UPS. More than one thousand watt. Number three, uh, this is a, a little uh, same as I mentioned before. Installation environment requirement from the tables, we should have stead steady workbench and a no and a no uh, vibration, no direct sunlight, a wide of a wide from dust. Why is not allowed dust? Because the dust will enter in into the main board, and, uh, and the dust will go to the main board, to the driver board, and uh, to the laser, then uh, something wrong will be happened. Sunlight is also not allowed. Allowed? Why? Because if the sunlight is very uh, is very strong, it will damage the uh, some sensor, uh, and. Uh, into the if the light uh, go to the inside to the HGB sensor, the HGB counting will be abnormal. Especially the blank voltage will be very different. Third is a wider wind from air condi air conditioner. Okay. Next is the temperature requirement. If the temperature is too low or too higher, for example, lower than 15 or higher than 30 machine will alarm because we have a uh, ambition temperature sensor so what do we have to do we have to do some uh, we have to open the air condition make sure the room temperature in this range humidity we also have the requirement so in case your machine in case the this machine installed uh, close to the close to the seaside uh, near the sea uh, we the best way is we have to install we have to open the air condition again yeah to lower down the humidity make it um, make it uh, in this range next uh, is for the pressure for the pressure you you can see the requirement from 70 to 1 
110 uh, kilo uh, power. So you will find uh, if this machine is installed in a high mountain area, for example, in Naples, or maybe in Bolivia, or maybe in Tibet, or maybe some other place, maybe in the Europe, the highest mountain, close to the, um, uh, some, some place, very high mountain area, we, we have to check this again. Maybe the result will be not stable. Next is the power. So I'm not, uh, I already introduced, okay. Uh, AC, uh, the AC is from 100 to 240, but uh, stable. So you can install this machine in Colombia, install this machine in Japan, install this machine in USA, anywhere. Just the voltage in this range, but uh, stable. Also, you don't worry about the frequency. Frequency is 50 and uh, 60, it's also okay. Next is the UPS. Last is the, the how we do the installation. So you can see the installation, if we want to do the installation, make sure you ha we have enough space. 1.1 meter from left and the right and the back, uh, sorry. 0.1 meter uh, place for the for the front and the back of the machine, and one meter for the left and the right. Why we have this requirement? Because we have to open the door. The door is a little big, so we leave one meter uh, at the left and and at at the right to open the door to do the maintenance and to do the troubleshooting. If the space is too less. What will happen? Engineer will get crazy. You know this. You know this machine. Uh, we have to do. We have to visit in at the minimum half a year, right? So when you go back to this hospital again, you would like to open the right door and to do some soaking, manual soaking for the WBC chamber and RBC chamber. You will get crazy if the space is too less. You cannot open the door. So that's not good. Not a good installation environment. And also, and also why we request the machine, uh, why we request the table should be strong, because this machine is quite heavier, okay. And when we go into, when we doing the uh, uh, moving, at least, we need uh, two persons uh, and uh, lift the limb from box to the table. Number four is the PC specifications. Uh, software, uh, we need a win Windows 7, Windows 10, or above. And the CPU is 1.4 G, and a dual core CPU. And for the RAM, Minimum is 4 GB. For the screen uh, resolution, uh, here the best one is one uh, divided three display is suggested. So you can see the um, resolution. The, and for the hard disk, minimum 100 GB. Last one is dual network adapter. If analyzer is connecting with a uh, list system, so we already introduced this. So number five, unpack the machine. When we doing the unpacking, we must uh, carefully, especially when we are doing, we are going to do the movement. We need uh, two persons and uh, the hand should be put at the handling mark. Never, never hold the autoloader. Do not, do not hold it here and hold it here. Otherwise, this autoloader will be broken. This share, this share will be damaged. So remember that. Number six, confirm the checklist. 
uh, just moment we introduced and uh, here here are the machine cable data cable power cable and the data cable and the grounding cable operation manual software installation CDRM okay this one is a little different with our latest machine now we are using the U disk so when you open the machine maybe you cannot find the CD but you will inst but um U disk instead the software is inside inside it and the latest software is A10.4 we just copied it copied and uh, then uh, copy to the PC and uh, do the installation quick operating operation guide this is the, a card for faster reading for the end user then the last one last a last one last two last three adapter this is the tube diluent adapter tube waste float adapter tube air filter air filter six pieces uh, this is for the maintain maintenance waste container this is the empty box reagent operation guide for close for closed system and the inspection record there's a paper and the tube rack how many tube rack six pieces never never slow the tube legs out why do you know why because the tube leg is only for DMI autoloader we cannot use other blend for example maybe from um, from some other uh, company they have many kinds of uh, tube leg but uh, this one is a special design you you can you can you can check the bottom of the rack you and you will find the differences the um, the space the uh, is designed only for DMI and uh, when you are using other blend uh, rack the auto loader will not uh, moving from right to left machine will alarm okay so pay more attention for the tube rack so after you get the checklist then do a signature by the customer number seven check the appearance of the machine check it carefully check it carefully and uh, there's no um, damage some dirty or some other if there, if if some place is broken, take the picture and send to DMI, and also take the picture of the box, out the paper box or wooden box. We can get the payment from our um, transporting company. And uh, number eight, remove the blender clips. So when you open the new machine, there are two blender clips, or maybe all the two nylon tie. No matter clips or nylon tie, we have to cut, we have to open, open them to release, to release the bed. Otherwise, machine will alarm, and uh, the bed might be broken. So this is very important. Before we switch on the machine, we must remove the clips or cut off the needle tie number nine connect the reagents so you can see the this is the diluent and uh, when we open this paper box you will get a IF card uh, in the first lot you no need to scan but in future uh, for the second border, you have to scan the RF card. Waste container is an empty box to collecting the dirty, uh, dirty liquid. Okay, and uh, this floater, this is the floater, right? We should when we doing the installation, the we should be making a check and uh, fast and um, 
and uh, close it make it and do not make it uh, like uh, thick clean or may otherwise machine will alarm for example machine will alarm uh, diluent is empty why because all the floater is sticked or maybe blocked uh, by the, the button okay at the button is blocked so we have to make sure this uh, sensor uh, this uh, diluent uh, cap assembly installed uh, properly okay next is the last one a you can see the volume is 500 uh, microliter LYA2 also 500 microliter for the for the LYA3 this is one liter and you can see the lot number here the lot number is the year months and the code and the warranty the shelf life is two years you can find the shelf life is two years and once it's open uh, some some end user they will write down the date here they, they will write down the date here and then they will say okay uh, after two months ago this region has have to be uh, have have to be slowed out why because only 60 days after only si only six days shelf life after opening so when it's a new we no need to do mark we no need to write down the open date here is the connector you can see uh, so don't worry about the long connection because we have the color like last one a is green right is to here uh, last two is the black so you can see the color here this is the green black blue so to remind the operators uh, don't make mistake number 10 connect link cable and the power cable look at the indicator the LED indicators the two indicators must be on one is green, one is yellow. And the laptop, if we are you, if we are connecting to the PC, right? You can find the same thing. The connector should be uh, on. Otherwise, something wrong of the cables or your some some uh, something of the uh, connect the port, something wrong of the machine or something else. So we need to do troubleshooting. Connect to the power cable. Wrong here. Number 11, IP software installation. Uh, now we have U disk, so same thing, just install software installation. Uh, IPU, what means IPU software? IPU means the operating, operating software. Sometimes we call it IPU, okay? So you know that is the software. So we do setting. This is the setting for this, uh, for the machine. The IP address should be 10.0.0.102. Sub subnet mask should be 255.255.255.0. Okay, then then save then save the setting. Number eleven, IPU software installation. So following the steps, this is the IPU. The name of the IPU DH7X. For that means it's for DH76, and uh, if you found the DH77X midline CRP, that is for another machine, for D7 CRP. So don't don't install a wrong IPU, okay? So copy the all files from uh, CD or from U disk, and then click setup to do the installation. Firstly, it will if it's your first time to install the IPU, it will uh, it will ask uh, uh, it will pop up a language setting, so you can choose the language. Se there are six kinds of language like uh, uh, English, Spanish, and uh, French, and uh, some errors. Okay, this is the uh, the 
folder where we are going to save the folder this is the e-disk e and uh, we can you, you can see the space requirement here and then click next next so when we set the uh, when we do this setting that means all the data all the sample uh, sample information will be saved in e-disk if I change the E to D, then all the uh, data will be installed in the D disk. Generally, we are not recommend to use the C disk. Why? Because C disk is for the system. So sometimes maybe the data will be uh, crushed, and then everything will be gone, right? But if we save the data in the e, D or E, we can find them back. Number 11, this is installation. Okay, we click finish to then Then login. For the login, we layer two password here. One is the admin for the end user. Service is for engineer. Service is for calibration or do some setting, do some soaking, do some troubleshooting. So this is only for engineer. Remember the password. Okay, it's like this. All, all the my machine have this password. Number thirteen. Okay, this is a new machine, right? Now we installed it, and uh, so uh, it will be automatically doing the um, cleaning. But after that, we have to perform a cleanser soaking. Why? because this machine just uh, finished the long time delivery so inside maybe there are some dirty so we do the cleanser soaking from here we will click the service maintenance clean the soaking then it will take 20 minutes so we can wait we can we can have a coffee after the soaking what to do we have to do background checking. Check the WBC, RBC, HGB, Plate and HCT. Uh, sorry, MCV. M MCV. Yeah. We will check the if they are meeting, if they are uh, meet meets, if they are meet list requirement. Okay. But using CBCD model. Number fifteen, quality control results check. So we can we use our control. You can see the lot number of control is here, and the level is normal level. Mod is CBC plus diff and expiry date, and we do, and and we do this checking. So generally we will do three times and get the CV. Number sixteen. If we do the control check, it's not enough. We also have to find a flash blood sample to check in the real result. And uh, for what? For checking the scattergram. Here, what's the difference between control and the flash blood? Control is only for the um, precise and the CV, but flash blood is for checking the scattergram. So that's why we use the flash blood to do the calibration, only only to calibration the gain setting for the for the scattergram, such as the SMS gain se game setting or HS gain setting. So here here is a here is a requirement: small go small ghost region. That means the ghost is the less is the better. If there are a lot of ghosts, what's that mean? That means there are plenty broken RBC pieces, or maybe the blood a little uh, clotting. That maybe that is some uh, PAD uh, aggregation, or maybe some abnormal. But but uh, whatever. That's not good. For the normal flash blood, the small ghost region should be less. Le less is better. 
the less the better. Number two, good aggregation and clear boundary. That means that each uh, each cell. This is the lymph, right? Then this is the monocyte. Here is the neutrophil and the eosinophil. All the particles have a very clear boundary. And the neutral reagent. Remember the the neutral the neutrophil neutrophil re re reagent area is a uh, ellipsis or over. And the center, the center of the neutrophil is lower than the monocyte. You can see this is a monocyte, right? This is a neutrophil. The shape should be a little uh, round, and in the middle of the central mid should be lower than the monocyte. Why? Because of the lysis. Because of the lysis, when the lysis doing the lysing, the cell, the the size of the monocyte and the nature of your will be uh, shrinked. But if the the final final size of them should be different, like this. Number four, the scattergram takes up nearly four four fifths in MMs in MS signal and the two third in low signal. If if this uh, requirement is uh, is me uh, is match it, match it, that means the gain setting of the RS and MS is good. We no need to do additional calibration or some some kind of uh, uh, adjustment. That means this is a good scattergram. You can see the MFs here. This is the four four fifths, and here is the two third. The last requirement: the scattergram is not allowed close to the the x axis, like x axis or y axis, not too close to here or to here. If if the scattergram is in 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 that uh, situation, that means something wrong of the laser. Please, uh, engineer, uh, sorry for interruption, uh, interrupting you. It's okay. Uh, this is very, very important information for us to understand. Can yes. you repeat, can of you repeat uh, information about scattergram of the, of, the, of the differentials? Yes. Can you repeat this idea of using uh, mm. trace blood? and how to evaluate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the validity of the scattergram and mm -hmm. going to do calibration and how to do it? Yes, okay. of course. Uh, <clears throat> actually, I already introduced the method of how to do the calibration, right? Do you remember yesterday when I introduced the scattergram and the histogram, uh, there is a gain setting, the value, right? We Every machine have a uh, have different uh, different gain setting for MS, MS and HS and also WBC gain setting, RBC gain setting, right? For what purpose? That that is for the f that that is just like the camera. Every camera have the focus, right? So if the so come back to the this machine, come back to the five uh, the, the differ, come back to the differ scattergram. This is the standard. If the gain setting of the RS is very less, you for example, the, the maximum is 255, right? So you so the scattergram will be very higher. Very higher. Why? Because the gain setting is high, then the then the photo will be higher, will be uh, extended. So if I decrease in the gain setting of the RS, the the scattergram we are getting lower and lower and lower and the uh, and tier to zero compressed. So that is uh, you can see the gain setting is just like um uh likes to uh pull pull up or pull down, compress and extend the scattergram in x axis. 
Then come back to the MS signal. If we adjust the gain setting, if the value, the big value of the gain setting MS, you will find the picture. You will find the, uh, the scattergram will be uh, extended, maybe out of the out of this window, right? So let's not, go, but that's not good. There's no need to make it too big or too slow. So we have the standard here. This is our standard. Just, just when we are using flash blood, the scattergram must, uh, must uh, match in this requirement. In the y-axis, y-axis means MM, MS, right? We must uh, do the calibration for the gain setting and make it the, uh, uh, make it the um, maximum uh, maximum place take takes up nearly four 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 fifths. This is a four fifths. This is a eosinophil. You you can see the particle. The red is, is eosinophil, right? So we make it just at uh, uh, four fifths, and for the x axis, that is for the air s signal. So we have to make we have to do the calibration. And make it the uh, scattergram take takes up to third, but uh, we cannot use QC. We cannot use co control to do this calibration. Only by fresh blood. So, am I clear? Yeah, yes, you, you explained that uh, with fresh blood we will use as a reference. Uh, to have a, a specific shape for the scattergram. Mm -hmm. uh, but if there is a guide with pictures, that would be much more. Uh, I'm not sure if that is in the manual or not. But if there is uh, in the manual, we will review it in the manual. If there is not in the manual for scattergram of the differentials, please share with us. Actually, it's coming. Uh, you can, we can keep going to do the chaining. Okay, uh, we have uh, yes. we have some more details. Uh, in the principle, okay. So in the number number four, uh, number two, number two, uh, number two part, we are going to introduce the principle, right? So this is the principle of the flow cytometry. So we will introduce some more details, okay? Now keep going. Okay, uh, keep going, okay. Number 17, 17th. Printer template setting. So, uh, you know, our machine can do many kind of printing, right? Like uh, A4 paper, A3 paper, A5 paper, or maybe some, some others, right? And we can do the printing with flag, without flag, with histogram, with differ, without differ. So we have to choose it, choosing the right template for the hospital, the one they, they like. So if they don't like it, we can do some customize here. And uh, we can we can do the design. We can we can do the some in this menu if we click the customize, we can do some design. And uh, for example, uh, we can add some, some. We can adjust the distance. We can, uh, we can remove some, uh, some display or, or something else, right? And here is the title. Generally, the title we we, we will use the library name. And uh, for example, this is ABC Hospital, right? So we will put the ABC Hospital Hematology Analysis Report uh, to make it uh, uh, better and the suitable for this library. So this is the print template setting. Uh, we can do, do customize, but uh, if, they, if, they, if they are saying no need, so we just choose one of them. There are many kind of printlet in this uh, setting. Number 18. So after we finish the installation, software installation, background checking, and uh, co control checking, calibration, and the flash blood uh, verification, then we have to leave, right? So before leaving customer size, we must uh, do a chaining for them. 
We do training and then record the test, uh, uh, test report and ask uh, for the con contact information for every operator. Maybe they are new, right? So we will, uh, we will do further training if necessary, or they can, or we leave our contract, leave, leave our business card. To the end, end, to the end user. Hello? Sorry, Jerry. Uh, there is some engineer uh, need to end uh, the, the meeting. Please let them in, please. Uh, let me... So uh, now installation successful, but the chaining maybe there's only a short chaining for the end user, right? Uh, maybe not enough. Maybe not enough. So we leave our business card and uh, get, but get a uh, get the signature from the person in charge, and then we uh, give our give a proof for for our installation. Okay, thank you for your installation. Thank you for your mini chaining. Uh, some operation chaining or something else, right? And uh, that's not enough. Why? Because we have uh, we have some co co <coughs> we have some uh, qu query uh, the return the return load and uh, check if there are any other customer nearby, and then we can do the we can do the regular maintenance. So this is for uh, for field engineer. They they keep traveling just to find. Uh, maybe some other machine from D mine need maintenance, right? And uh, we have a special, we have a service department, and uh, this service guy, service department, we are call back in three days. Uh, we generally in D mine, we have a, we have a, a special, we have a service team, and we have some a uh, girl, uh, the girl we are call back, uh, call back the hospital. If if everything is 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 normal, the installation is success, successful. How do you think our installation? Uh, how about our training? How about um, uh, our engineers um, service or something else to get the feedback from from engineer and then give um, this is also this is something uh, requirement for for our engineer. Okay. Number two the measurement principle. So why we introduce the measurement principle? That is for chaining. So as you know, when the end user, they join our field engineers chaining, they will ask many questions, including the function principle or something else. Just like uh, you just like you ask me a question, what is the scattergram? What's the scattergram between DMI and other, other company? What's the color for? How do I know this is a good scattergram or good histogram? By what? By QC or by fresh blood? So this is a, a short introduction for the uh, princi measure principle. So for the function, here, firstly, we introduce the function of the diluent. What's the function for diluent? First, dilute blood sample before testing. Second, provide an environment similar like the plasma to maintain the size of blood cell. Why we have to maintain the blood size? Why? Because we, we are doing counting, especially doing the counting for the RBC, platelet, if the size is if the cell is broken, then we cannot do measuring, right? When there's nothing. The, the size is very small. There's no uh, the, the, the counting will be very very bad. Just uh, we don't we are not using the diluent. Diluent is just like the salty water. Uh, zero point nine, maybe I'm not sure. Maybe just the function is se similar like the. Uh, normal salon. The so to maintenance the size of the platelet and the RBC or something else. So uh, very important. That's that's why we cannot using other blend diluent. Otherwise, the background will be abnormal. Number three, provide a conductive environment for impedance cell counting. Uh, without 
didn't the counting will be failed. Machine will alarm. So what's the alarm? If we are not using normal alarm, but uh, pure water, what kind of alarm will be here? That will be clotting alarm, upture voltage alarm, or maybe some else. Okay. Number four, provide a shift flow for optical channel counting. So, uh, because this machine, we are using uh, uh, laser, right? We are using flow cytometry. Flow cytometry means we need we must have shift flow, and uh, the shift flow we are we are cover the blood sample, then passing the laser, right? So, if no shift flow the counting will be uh, not good okay last one cleaning clean the hydraulic system including probe tubes air, and the chambers so cleaning is also very important next uh, function for last last one you can see the size of the RBC this is RBC and the lympho mono neutrophil your synovial and the basal. So after the lines, so continue uh, the lines function for the lines one for what? This this is the cell before lysing. So after the lines one a, mixed with the cell and the diluent, it will shrink it. Okay, this is the size after lysing. You can see the RPC will be broken to pieces. So these pieces will be displayed on the in our scattergram. That is the ghost. Do you remember I introduced the ghost? Where is the ghost from? From the broken RPC. And the less is better. Less means the cell is very small. If the if the broken if the quality, if the broken RBC is still big, the ghost is not good, right? It will be, there will, you will see many ghosts. Okay. So if so, that's why the quality of less A, the quality of the LYA one is very important. Otherwise, we cannot make it broken. Same for the lymphocyte, it will make it shrinking, and make it smaller, 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 smaller. So why we need to do why we need to make it smaller for what? For counting the total RBC, sorry, total WBC one two three four five, we make we do counting together, right? And once the basal is, you can see only basal cannot be sinked, right? So you can find that the basal is very big, then we can do the counting, uh, from the histogram. So for what? Let's, so what's the function of the LYA1? For counting the WBC and uh, basal. Actually, also counting for the hemoglobin. A little we will introduce. Second, uh, next function of the last three and the last two. We are using we are using the chemical staining in different chamber. So after we put the last three and the last two for what? For chemical staining. Make it uh, have a very special shape and out looking. So we after so we can our so our camera uh, so our laser can take a good photo and uh, do the identify. Identify for the lympho, identify for the mono, and the basal, and the monocyte, and the some, and the others. Okay, totally five. Next principle. Next principle is for the impedance method. Here is the impedance method. The principle is like this: uh, If the cell is bigger, the voltage, the voltage, I mean here, here is the voltage, 
will be higher. So now you can see one big, uh, one big uh, voltage and a small voltage. They are two pink, right? So our software will do the identify. Okay, this is the bigger, bigger voltage. Bigger voltage means the um, RBC, and the small voltage is for the platelet. Why? Why the voltage is will be uh, will be uh, affected by the cell because this is the impedance principle. So the the currency, the current is the same. This is the constant current source. So when you're doing the measuring, okay, if there's nothing pass by, there's no uh, there's noisy, only very small noisy, right? Just once uh, one cell. Uh, maybe we don't know what 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 cell it is. Maybe RBC, maybe plate passing by. So, so our the monitor, we are, the sensor, we're collecting uh, the uh, 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 voltage, a uh, pink. So okay. So after some seconds counting, right? So in the RBC chamber, we will, uh, or maybe WBC chamber, we do counting. So we will get many. In, uh, many pings. So then we using the software to do the identify. Then to the counting. So just like a quarter principle, we also call it a quarter principle. So this is principle. So you can see these the uh, cell RBC, platelet, WBC passing by the quarter. Then we will get the result. But we have rice one A. We have the rice right. So the lights will make the RBC and the plate that broken. So then only WBC. So we can use this principle to do the WBC counting and the basal counting. Why we can do the basal counting? Because the basal is bigger, right? Do you remember the basal after the lights in the, the size is still same, same as before. So only other lympho, mono, and uh, eosinophil. And, uh, those for those natural fear for those cells is smaller, so we can do that counting. Okay, this is the histogram. This is the pink. This is the this is the wave. So now machine uh, our software can do in the counting. Now is now we are doing counting. Okay, this is the small size. Okay, it's here. And here. And here. So. We are using the Fourier transformer transformation. This is the size. You can see the size, and uh, and the here the y axis is the quantity. So now machine is doing the counting, counting, and then we will use our software to get the histogram. So this is the this is how how we get the histogram, and the least sig signals. What are they? What's the signal? This is the platelet. Why? Why? I, why I'm saying this is platelet? Because the size. This is a forty forty uh, f liter, right? And a thirty five. Platelet is small. If if here the size is eighty or maybe uh three hundred or maybe two hundred, that means this is the WBC signal. If it's eighty, that is RBC signal. But here is only 40, so this is what? This is platelet. And we are doing the counting. These, these signals are original, original signals, and uh, this histogram is a um, calculated signal. Next one is the color match method. For the color match, for the uh, color magic method we are using it for counting the HGB so we have the LED lamp the wavelength is 525 nm and uh, before before inside is diluent right so you can see the color is um, transparent there's no color but after we put the blood in we can we can calculate it uh, uh, we can get the signal here and then we using the signal to do in the counting and then we will get the we will get the result and uh, i have a question here mr jerry if you allow me okay please there is like uh, a plate next to hemoglobin back is that to do electromagnetic 
shielding or make something like that for hemoglobin measurements? Uh, do you mean? Uh, sorry, may, uh, um, may, can you? Uh, yeah, there, there, there is. There is uh, can you hear me very well? Now it's okay. Now it's, yeah, okay. now it's okay. Yes, there is. There is a plate. A plate. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like making electromagnetic shielding or next to uh, WBC hemoglobin bath. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like in front and in back of the of the bath. There is like shielding shielding plate mm -hmm. i think uh, can you explain the idea and the use of this uh, plate because many other machines does not have uh, other other manufacturers does not do this mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, this design of these plates around the bars of the okay 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 uh, you know the the hemoglobin is from RBC, right? From RBC, so the color is the color is red, and uh, <coughs> machine is so our machine can check the. You can see this is the this is the sending, right? This is the emitting emitting signal. Emitting signal, it will send the uh, send the, the light from left to right. And uh, this is the receiver. Receiver is res uh, is to get the signal, right? So machine we are doing the comparing before when when the solution when the liquid is not blood is diluent. Okay, this is the sample sample uh, photo current. Okay, we will get the sample current. Maybe the voltage is, for example, if this is a diluent, is four point. Uh, sorry. Uh, when the when the uh, when the blank uh, photo current, this is the voltage is four point five, right? Do you remember when we uh, doing the calibration, the voltage is four point five here. And uh, after we have sample inside uh, the chamber, okay, this is we will mixed uh, mixed with the mixed with the lights, okay. Before mixed with lights, we will get uh, the this result. So when we doing a comparing, we can do in a calculation by what by this signal and the transfer the signal uh, to the to the unit. This is the this is the unit. This is the value. We will get this value and the principle we call it uh, uh, color magic method. Just by what? Just by the by this uh, formula by this formula. And the signal collection, signal collection, uh, this is the colorless diluent. And the sample uh, photo current, this is the red color sample value in the chamber. So we doing the we doing the checking and the comparing. If you if there are more RBC, more HP, more hemoglobin, you can see the color is much deeper, right? So. Uh, so when we so our software we are, we are check the how deep it is to get the value. Then transfer then uh, we will get the uh, we will transfer the voltage to the this value and get the result. So that's the principle. And uh, if the doctor is still confused, later I will send you the a formula some more details. It's okay. We we have a. Uh, uh, we have a lecture for this. Is okay? Yeah, it's very clear, uh, Mr. Jerry, uh, mm -hmm. Engineer Jerry. But uh, my question was about not around, not about the color, but about the plate. There is two plates next to the uh, hemoglobin WBC mm -hmm. bath. Mm -hmm. There is two plates sandwiched around the. Those bath. are not plates. Yeah. Those are Yes. Those are not plates. One is filtered, and and another one is photodiode. After uh, no, 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 not not uh, no, not not the this light one. signal. I'm not talking about the photodiode and the emitter. I'm talking about the uh, external, not attached to the to the blade, to the bath, but next to the bath. Mm -hmm. If you if you if you look, take a second look to the bath. Mm -hmm. There is around the bath. There is two plates. 
metal blade around the path. And uh, it's and there is two connected wires to them. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if they are doing like shielding or they're like kind of electromagnetic field that regulate hemoglobin measurements. Uh, I, mm -hmm. So I asked to just to explain further if there is any idea of using them. Do you mean that this structure, the design is quite different with other blend, right? Yes, this one is not presented in other models or other manufacturers. Mm -hmm. The two plates surrounding mm -hmm. the WBC hemoglobin bath. Mm -hmm. Okay, if, if, if it's not very clear, uh, you can proceed. Then I will take a picture and uh, try to uh, delineate in the picture, make marking for what I need. But for now, I don't want to delay you uh, on your uh, presentation. You can keep going if it's not clear now. Okay, so let's uh, keep going. And uh, if you still have some questions, we will, uh, we will send email to you, okay? Next, the, that is the flow cytometry, uh, laser-based. So, how can we do the differ counting? Frankly speaking, it's by the laser. We are using the, um, here is, you can see the listed structure, and the, in the, at the bottom, this is the sample. Uh, maybe the WBC, you can see the each uh, cell, right, passing by. So, but the tube, but this flow cell in the middle is very, very small. Just like uh, just like uh, a, a needle inside of the needle and a very small place for passing by. <clears throat> but uh, okay, so along the list, along the here, we have shift flow. Shift flow we are passing by. Uh, she's flow, she's liquid we are covered the sample and the lamp passing the flow cell. And beside the beside the flow flow cell, we have a laser beam. Laser beam is just like camera, for what? For taking the photo, for taking the photo for each cell. As we as we mentioned, the size of the cell is different. For example, the lympho is the smallest, right? So after taking the photo, you can see the this is the laser beam. And the laser beam, we, we, we will get the, the size signal. If the laser beam is, uh, is blocked, is blocked by the cell, okay, see, the signal just in the, just, uh, in the front, the front signal will be, will be decreased. So that means we know the size. So this is the sensor to send to the main board. So, so we, we, we know the size of the laser beam, and we know the size of the cell, right? But less is not enough. We also have to know the granularity. What is granularity? Granularity is the something inside the cell. For example, the lympho and the mono. There is no there is no granularity. So the there uh, that is MS signal. MS sig the granularity will make the laser beam a little a little declined. Not in the middle. It will give some uh, others. It will get other size signal. So the size, the signal around here and here, uh, we can get the middle lines, middle angle signal. So that is for what? For the granularity. So now we have two, uh, two features. One feature is the size. Second feature is the granularity. So with the two kinds of um, Specification: We know the size. We know what what is this uh, cell. If this is small, and uh, no clear, and uh, small, if the if the cell here is the small size and the small granularity. So what what is this cell? This this one must be the lymphocyte, right? And if the size is a little bigger, it's the biggest, but uh, very but no, still no granularity. Then, we, then we, we are saying this is the monocyte. So after keep, 
keep monitor. The laser beam will always there, 24 hours working if machine is, uh, is on. So we do identify one by one. Okay, just like the monitor. And uh, these, these cells we are passing by one by one. And, uh, and then we can do what? We can do counting and the differ, right? Okay, so this is the principle for the flow cytometry. Okay, come back to the laser. This is the laser in each DH seventy six. The most important, the most expensive part, and made it, not made in China, but in Japan. This is the laser. The laser is very easy to uh, uh, it will very sensitivity to the temperature. So make sure the temperature is very stable for this laser. Otherwise, the wavelength will be changed. So the laser we are we are uh, focused in the flow cell. This is the flow cell, and uh, just uh, behind the just uh, behind the the, uh, the flow cell, this is the signal air S signal. In the middle, in the middle, this is the air S signal. That is low angle signal. For what? For collecting the signal of the size for each cell, and uh, at the left and the right. That is the middle angle signal. For this, for the two sensor here, close to the mid, close to the LS, that is for collecting the granularity. Okay, now we have two specifications, and the last signal is from HS signal. So also there may be some other other angle laser, so it will be collected to the HS signal. For what? For for get some more details. For uh for for make it a two D signal to three D. We need the HS signal. Or you, or we can say that is for the nuclear signal. Nuclear signal. Okay, come back to this picture. This is the meaning of three angle scatter signal. This is one of the cell, right? And the cell volume, where can we get the specification? From low angle signal, one to five degree. And the middle angle signal, we can get the cell, cell granularity. Some cell have granularity, uh, some cell have uh, bigger granularity. So we can get this signal. Next one is the high angle signal. This is for complexity. Complexity is the nuclear. You can see this is the nuclear yeah, complexity. So, with three kind of signal, we know exact. We know the. We can do identify. Identify means counting. So here comes the how it taking photo. This is the size signal from air is right. Some is big, some is small. And this is the granularity signal. Granularity, some is uh, big, some is small, some is big, some is small, some is big. Okay, granularity is the biggest. Okay, now we have two specification. Then we are doing the, we doing the, we doing the scattergram. Okay, one by one, second. Okay, so what's the signal of this? This is a low, small size and a small granularity, and it will, it will, it will go to this place. Low LS, low LS, low MS. That means this is the ghost. Maybe it's a ghost, not uh, not something. And uh, this signal from where? Middle, middle. So what's that? This is the lympho, or maybe more lympho. This is mono, and this is granularity. This is eosinophil. So keep monitor. Now maybe there, here comes more and more uh, wave, right? Come, come here, come here, and then so in this category, we will get a picture like this. If if the signal go to this area. We call it a ghost. If the signal go to this area, we call it, we call it a lymphocyte. 
and the signal go to this purple, we call it the mono side. Go to the here, this is neutral field. Go to here, you know, signal field. The generally the cell we are not go to here, 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 here. They have the, they have the some uh, they have the some uh, something uh, fixed area to do the to do the uh, to do the um, to draw the picture or we can say that. So this is the standard scattergram. This is a four three uh, four fifths and uh, here is two third. Then we will get a normal scattergram. Okay, this is the ghost. Okay, come back to the 2D scattergram, can be done together. This one is the most important, LS and MS signal. Uh, we use this scattergram to check the flash blood, and this is the ghost, lympho, mono, neutrophil, eosinophil. And this is the, from the other side, we are taking the photo, but the, here is HS signal. The difference is, is the HS signal, the lympho is a little close to the uh, AX axis. And the monocyte, and if, and if it's the HS and the MS, you can see the lympho is close to this side. The, the, three, the three picture actually is for the same sample, same blood sample, but from taking the photo from different, uh, different angle, different uh, site. Just uh, we, as we mentioned yesterday, uh, for taking a photo from uh, a, a person, right? Take, taking a photo uh, in camera, in, uh, in the camera shop. So when we're taking the photo, we take one from the front and the left side and the right side. Okay, now we, we get a 3D picture. So this is for, for light purpose. Now, if we have three picture, we can draw this three D, three two D, get one three D. So this is you can see we can load in, we can load in and find the, the particles uh, from each uh, each uh, axis. Lympho, mono, neutrophil, and eosinophil. This is the ghost. What it means ghost? Ghost is the broken RBC. Should be at least corner. But if you found many, many ghosts here, what does that mean? That means PRT aggregation. Why? Because PRT, once the PRT aggregation, the size, uh, the size will be increased. Do you remember the, the signal? Okay, this is the air S, right? And this is, this is the M S, and this is the Z, Z axis, that is for the platelet. You can see there are pl uh, many platelet here, around here. Okay, next is the hydraulic system. For the hydraulic system, uh, we have to uh, there are two part. Uh, for the brief introduction and uh, for the working principle. Mm, do you need any break? Hello, Simon. Uh, do we need any break so we can come back after the break? Yes. How many minutes? Uh, maybe half an hour. Half an hour is okay. Half an hour. Okay. So thirty minutes, right? Yeah, thirty minutes. Because we use hydraulic system for troubleshooting, right? And. You know, uh, when I was first time to to do um, to join the training from Dmi, I just feeling very amazing. When 
Why? Because we only need one uh, click the aspirated key, then we can get the result from the screen. Just after a few minutes, uh, 1.5 minutes, then we can get the result from uh, we can get the RBC, WBC, platelet, and the MCV, <coughs> and the scattergram, and uh, totally 29 parameters, right? So it's amazing, but how does it work? How does it work? Who is doing the counting? From where? What's the function of each part? Like uh, the valve, what's the function of the valve? What's the function of the pump? <coughs> when uh, when it start to open and when start when it start to close, so why? So okay, let's bring these questions to continue our introduction. Firstly, we will have the introduce introduction the function of the criti critical parts. Second, we are going to introduce the working principle. So hydraulic parts, this is very basic information. Uh, for an engineer, we must know how many valves in one machine and how many cans of valve in this machine. So totally, the quantity for valves, 30 pieces. And the five cans of valves, how many unit pumps, three. And uh, how many cans of, two. Syringe, we have seven syringes and uh, four cans of syringe. So here are they. Uh, this is a big two way, big three way, small two way, and uh, small three way. And uh, this is a liquid pump, pinch valve, and uh, air pump. So you can see. <coughs> So you can see here is uh, five cans of valve. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, sorry, five. So five cans of valve. Two cans of pump. One, two. Okay. So <coughs> which one is negative? Which one is for positive? Air pump is for positive. And uh, this is the vacuum, vacuum uh, liquid. One Q, uh, this is a um, liquid pump, so <coughs> for negative pressure. So you can see <coughs> what's the <coughs> so what's so you can see the valve is just like the switch, it work as a switch, including pinch valve, and for the pumps is the power source to drive the hydraulic system or <coughs> or some air moving up and uh, moving down, right? So the pump is the power source. So for the valves, here are principle. <coughs> the left one is two-way, small two-way. The right one is small three-way. In the middle, you can see the number two. It is, this is the inlet. Where is the outlet? It's here. <coughs> and you can see the number NC. NC means normal close. That means when there is no power, here is close. The water or the liquid cannot, on the air cannot pass by. Why? Because no no power, <coughs> then, uh, then no pass, right? So once the power is on, this valve will open. No power, okay, no pass. When, the po when it get power, the liquid and the air can pass in by. Okay, let's let's go to the right valve, small three way. Same thing in the middle place. This is the inlet, and uh, where is the outlet? You can see the NC and the NO, right? NC is same like this one. So when there is no power, it's closed. When the power is on, okay, the water will go this way. What it means NO? NO means normally open. So when the power is is on, 
when there's no power, it's always on, right? When the water, when the power is on, it's off. So the water can go this way, go left way. This is the no power. The water can go this way, and uh, when get power, go the right way, go the left way. So you can see the, the three way valve. It, the function of the three valve is to change the the direction, change the liquid direction, right? So you can, you can choose the left, choose the right, for this purpose. Okay, here is uh, the syringes, assembly, and uh, totally seven pieces, and uh, four groups. They also the power source to do the, to push in the um, diluent, sample, syringe, uh, sample and the sheet flow, and also the lights to move and uh, move in and moving out, moving in and move out. So this is the syringes. The left one is light syringe. Second, diluent syringe. Third, she's liquid syringe. Uh, you can see the differences. It's here. They are the angle, uh, triangular. The last one is the Sample syringe. Okay. <coughs> Some other critical parts like the sample probe. Uh, remember, this probe is different with with the one of DH thirty six and DH fifty. Why? Because we must use the we do punching right. So when the needle is doing the punching, the end this end is very sharp. Okay, and uh, with uh, with side uh, with side door, side hole. And uh, so here, <coughs> so that's why we are co uh, we are saying the sample prop of this machine is the consum is the consumable. After two twenty thousand samples, auto <coughs> uh, auto punching, this prop have to be replaced. So the service life is uh, counted by the by the times. <coughs> Second is the swap. The function of this swap is for cleaning this probe. But we need but we have to do the position calibration. Why? When because when the swap is moving it's doing the cleaning, right? Move up and move down to do the clean the probe. Uh, we must uh, make sure all, all uh, every place, sorry, the place, uh, can the place, the place um, have blood should be cleaned. So we need to do position calibration from bottom to the top. Later, I will show you how to do calibration. And third part is pressure chamber. You can see the pressure chamber. So means inside is positive pressure. Vacuum chamber. Inside is vacuum pressure. Differ chamber. This is the place uh, where we prepare the sample for differ counting. Remember, only for differ counting. WBC and RBC is for WBC counting and RBC counting. So how do so how do I know this is WBC? This is RBC. From where? From the HTB sensor. The HTB sensor will be connected to the WBC chamber. RBC, no. There's no there's no uh, place to install the HTB sensor. And in the middle one is flow cell. And this one is not from China. This one is from Japan, and very expensive. When we doing the cleaning of flow cell, remember using our service kit to do the cleaning. Otherwise, this flow cell will be scratched, scratched, and uh, dirty, broken, or leakage. 
and we cannot do we cannot uh, machine cannot pass the control test QC test so this is the critical pass number two the hydraulic working principle So this is the overview of the hydraulic diagram for DH76. Uh, don't worry, is uh, we can <coughs> we can separate this uh, diagram from left part here. Le in this part, we call it the default counting. Where where are, what are they? This is the series flow syringe flow cell, sample syringe, and uh, including the differ, and uh, including the waste, uh, <coughs> the waste uh, uh, filter, and uh, the drainage valve. These parts, we call it the differ counting. So that's why I'm saying the hydraulic system is not uh, difficult at all, because, because every parameter counting uh, will be um, uh, we will be counted. Uh, counted. We will be counted independently. So these parts for different counting. And the WBC chamber, and uh, with the filter, drainage valve. These parts we call it uh, WBC counting. And uh, here is RBC counting. So do you remember how many parameters for WBC counting? Uh, 11 parameters right wbc and uh, and the uh, differ counting differ counting we have 10 parameters but in wbc chamber we have three parameters will be uh, will be calculated like wbc hgb basal will be calculated here others differ differ counting will be calculated by differ chamber and the laser and the flow cell right RBC, we have how many parameters? RBC, we have seven, right? Like uh, RBC, MCV, and uh, RDW, and uh, some more. And also PAT also will be calculated here. So, so we, when we are saying uh, three part, it's very simple, right? Three, three part is we don't have different counting. So when you when you check our hydraulic system for three part, and uh, you you can you there's no different chamber, no flow cell, no shift flow sensor, and uh, and only one sample syringe, right? So you so for this machine, just uh, we add this module on, then we can do file part. For the mini, for the mini file part, DF50, that one is uh, also not too much different. Just uh, the syringe is very less. We we using the common syringe and uh, no different chamber. We are using the WBC chamber as the uh, as different counting. So the so the speed is not uh, very fast, but this machine is very high. Uh, very high if if uh, efficiently uh, with high efficiency. Why? Because of the testing speed is very fast. So here is uh, some these parts for what we call it a dispension system. Dispension what? Dispension the diluent, dispension the lines, and uh, from the bottles to the chambers. So just you can say <coughs> this is the the pipette. The syringe is work as a pipette to dispensing dispensing. Just to tell me how much volume you when you need the sample or how much volume you need the uh, lines diluent. We will give a very precise volume into each chamber. And uh, two, this is the positive pressure chamber system. Positive pressure system for what? For when we need the positive pressure, okay, pressure, ne negative, uh, positive pressure come. When we need a negative pressure, negative pressure come. 
So here is the pressure control system, right? And this the two pump, the two liquid pump is for drainage. Drainage is the common part for three chambers. So now after this introduction, you can see it's clear, right? And the, this is the needle. Needle, the prop is the common part and the swab. Every time after we doing we finish the um, dispensation of the blood, uh, we will do cleaning like that. So this is the overview. And uh, even we have thirty pieces valves, but uh, every valve have every valve have different function. So this is the principle of hydraulic system. As we as as I introduced, we divided this system to three part. Differ major module, WBC, HGB, and also basal ma major module, and RBC, PAT, plate measurement module, and this is the pressure module. So it's clear, right? When we need to do in a differ counting, the last. Three and the last two will be dispensed, 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 uh, dispended here. Yeah. And when we need to do the WBC and HDB counting, last one dispense it. And then obviously, no need to last at all. Remember, only diluent. When we need to do the RBC and the plate counting, only diluent. No, and the blood. Okay, and the blood. So next, this is the principle of hydraulic system. If we are doing a PD mode, similar, others is the same. I mean the counting process is the same. Uh, differ, WBC, RBC, it is the same. Just the difference is, is the ratio. Uh, we will add uh, 100, so bladder consumption is 20 microliter, right? And the diluent is 180 microliter. So if, if we mix that together, so we will get the ratio is 1 to 10. And the total volume is 200 microliter. Then after we get the sample, we use, we do manually. We make it as a sample and do the manual testing. So if we get result, uh, we will have this very, this very better preset result. So hydraulic system working details one, two, three, four, five, six, six modules. First one is sampling and blood dispensation module. Second, differ measurement channel. Third, WBC basal HGB measurement channel. Fourth, RBC PRT measurement module. Fourth is the power source and the waste discharge module. Last is the status monitoring module. Like what? Like pressure, and uh, like the temperature, and uh, like the position sensor, uh, location sensor, something else. Okay, so as we introduced, there are many modules. So which one, which module will be tested first? Here are the orders. Firstly, okay, we get 20 microliters blood. Then the blood will dispend into WBC chamber. After that, the blood will be added into the differ chamber for differ counting. So after we after that there's no blood anymore. So the prop will go to the WBC chamber and get some sample then dispensing, dispensing the RBC dispensing the blood into the RBC again for RBC and the PRD counting so this is the orders for dispensation okay so so is this clear You can you can check the prop. So when you open the machine, uh, open the right door, and uh, take a video. After we finish the um, 
PowerPoint the training, uh, I will give you a video for for the DH76. Then you can understand how it how it uh, how it doing the dispension. Okay, next is the diver measurement channel. Principle we already introduced laser based flow cycle measure, and uh, what are parameters uh, it uh, measured? Monocyte. This is monocyte quantity, monocyte percentage. Uh, this uh, this icon means quantity. This percentage means the uh, uh, percentage. Okay, lympho, neutral, eosinophil. One, two, three, four. So five parameters, uh, sorry eight parameters, and the reagent less three, less two, and the diluent. So you can see firstly dosing, mixing, measure, cleaning, and the waste discharge. Uh, this is the this is the uh, in in incubation. Okay, we we also can do is dux from here. Firstly, last three, edit. So you can see the light when the last three entering into this diva chamber, it passed a uh, what? Passed a, a heater for heating up the temperature. After heat it, then the light entered into the diva chamber. After that, we do bubble mixing. Uh, firstly, blood dis dispensation. First is blood dis uh, dis dispensation. Di dispensation is from top, right? There's a hole uh, at the top of the diva chamber. So the prop will go to here and the dispensation of blood. And after that, we do we last three. We add it. We add it here. Then bubble mixing. So what it means bubble mixing? Bubble mixing is make sure the blood and the lice mixed very well. But what we but we use the bubble by positive pressure. The positive pressure we are going from bottom to the up, bottom to the top, and the valve fourteen will open and close quickly to generate the bubble. Then the bubble will go to pass by the filter. And then go to the deeper chamber, then do mixing. You 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 can hear the sound when it, when the machine doing the bubble mixing. You can hear the sound. Uh, okay, so later I will show you for this. After the bubble mixing, what's the next steps? The next steps is the last two. The last two will be added, but also passing by the heater. Then into the diffusion. Then bubble mix again. Next step is the diffusion measurement channel. For sample pre preparation, what it means sample preparation? Sample prepare. Uh, sample preparation means just moment. We already we already introduced the last three uh, blood. Last two are well mixed well, right? We already we already mixed well and then it will we are going to prepare the sample and store the sample in these tubes. So where is the power from? From this sheath flow syringe. So so after this uh syringe is is going down the blood we are passing here, here, and here. And the blood, the sample we are stored in this tube, right? Then next is the sample counting. Before we start to sample counting, we need a sheath flow. Oh, okay, so skip, skip the sheath flow preparation. Next is the sample counting. Sample counting means what? This syringe will push the push the blood in this uh, in this tube. We already have the sample, right? So the syringe will move up to push in the sample, passing the flow cell, right? So just the blood sample passing by the flow cell, 
the laser beam will keep taking photo, right? To get the RS signal, MS signal, and the HS signal, then we will get a scattergram. So just once the sample passing by, counting finish it. Because the laser is always on. Then after that, go go to the uh, waste charging tube to the valve 18 and then to the different chamber again. So you can see the cham now finished the different counting. Okay, let's let's uh, make it let's make it a full process. Okay, this is the last three. Last three we are dispensing to the different chamber. After that, the blood. Last three and the uh, sample, sample means blood. Okay, then this is the sample. Sample we are dis dispending into the diva chamber. After that, we need a bubble mixing, right? So this is the positive pressure. And then doing the bubble from bottom. Where is the power for the positive pressure? By this air pump. This pump, we are pumping the air into this chamber, then we will get the positive pressure, right? But we can release it. We can release the, release the pressure from here and do bubble mixing. So after we bubble mixing fixed, we, we will input, we will dispense in the nice two into the different chamber. Okay, this is the last two. The valve will change the direction, open and on, and uh, to change the flow side, flow direction, and uh, in and dispensing into the different chamber. After that, bubble mixing again. So it will repeat the process. And then open, the, release the pressure by this valve, open and close, to get the air bubble to the mixing. Number two, measurement. As 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 we are as we mentioned, for the measurement, we need to prepare the blood sample, right? So the blood sample we take we suck it by the shish flow syringe and then close the valve tail. Then the sample we store in this tube. So after that, shish flow syringe we keep going down. For what? For taking the diluent from the diluent uh, container, then pushing, then pushing the syringe sensor, moving up to generate the shift flow. This shift flow will help for counting. So now shift flow is here, is ready. We will pushing. The syringe, okay, here we have a syringe. This syringe, we are pushing the sample. You can see this syringe, we are pushing the sample. These, these, are, these red tubes are samples. Pushing the, shape, uh, pushing the samples, passing by the flow cell, flow chamber, then finish the counting. After finish the counting, what do we have to do? Cleaning, right? So we can do cleaning and the waste discharge. So there are three places to, to clean it. First, uh, first uh, loop is to this tube to clean it. Second, cleaning this tube. And the last uh, is cleaning flow cell, clean the shift flow. <coughs> so step by step, any tubes have blood, we must do the cleaning. Even the waste, uh, even the dis discharging tubes, we will cleaning, cleaning them, and uh, then drainage them 
to the waste container. So that's why you when we uh, open the waste container, you if we check inside, the color is a little red. Why? There are many red blood cell inside it. So or some remaining blood will be added into this uh, container. So just moment is our different counting. How about the WBC, basal, and the HGB measurement? Principle is impedance method and color magic method. Parameters, WBC, basal quantity, basal percent, and HGB. Reagent is the last one and the diluent. So the process is dosing, mixing, measure, and cleaning. After cleaning, waste discharging. So this is the chamber, WBC chamber. And uh, here is the aperture. So if we need to do in this counting, Firstly, we need uh, what? We need uh, negative pressure, right? Negative pressure means uh, we can suck in the sample passing by the aperture, then we can do the counting by impedance uh, principle, right? right? Second condition, second condition, we need aperture, and this aperture is no blocking, no blockage. Third, we need the we need at least a sample, very, uh, very uh, good sample, and with conductive, like uh, the diluent, like the blood, and uh, they must be well mixed. So if they are mixed well, <coughs> we can, uh, we can. So when the negative pressure is here, it will suck in the, the good sample passing by the aperture. Then we will get the stable and uh, good and the price and the precise result, right? Even the background, if if we do if we if we are doing a background counting, so that means here in this chamber, this is totally totally uh, only diluent, no dirty part, no no blood or no air bubble, right? So no air, just the liquid here, no just the diluent then passing by the aperture. So in that purpose, uh, we can get a very good background. So same, same thing, the same for the QC or blood. The last condition, the fourth condition is the sensor. You, as we mentioned, there are two cables here. That is the constant current, constant current thing, right? It will be sending the signal to the main board and to do the software calculation and uh, some, uh, you know, something, uh, the software, we, we need the software to transfer the signal, the analogic signal to the digital signal and then get the histogram. So once we have the, hi once we have the histogram, we will get the result, WBC, basal, and HGB. So what's the diameter of the WBC and RBC? WBC is 100 micrometer, and RBC is 70 micrometer. This is the negative pressure. And the blood cells go through this aperture. Diluent. This is for cleaning, right? If we are doing the cleaning, uh, we, we have diluent to push the aperture and then uh, clean this tube and this tube okay so come back to the hydraulic system firstly we need the diluent right so the diluent the syringe will move down and then sucking the, taking the diluent and pushing the diluent into where into the WBC chamber right so when the when the diluent is moving, you can see the you can see the valve should be open and closed, right? You can see this is a, a the right side, 
the right side is always open. Okay, if I want to push in the diluent into this chamber, the valve 4 should be open, right? And the valve 9 should be closed. Why? No power means no power. Valve, valve 9 should be no power. Then the diluent can pass in from here and to here and then to here. Then valve 8 also power off. And then the diluent. Oh, sorry. The valve A should be on. Then the diluent will go to WB WB chamber. If the valve A is off, the diluent will go to the RBC chamber, right? So after the diluent is there, the sample will be input into this chamber, and then bubble mixing. Similar like the diffa bubble mixing. So we need a positive pressure again and uh, mix the uh, and the but this time the valve fifteen will open and close quickly to generate the air bubble to do the mixing. Just after it mixed it, the sample will take some blood. The sample prop will go to this chamber and take some blood. For what? for the RBC counting. So we will prepare the sample here. But after that, we can we can input the last one A. So can we exchange the two steps? Can we input, the, can we dispense in the last one A first, then do the mixing? Oh, sorry, then do the, uh, the sample taken? No, cannot. Why? Because if we do that, the last one A will remove all the RBC and the platelet. So at that purpose, we, can do, we cannot do counting at all in RBC chamber because this sample there is no RBC and the RBC and the platelet. So that's why <coughs> we taking the sample, the problem we are taking the sample again from WBC chamber, then input the last one, then be Mixing again. So next, mixing. This is the bubble mix. Uh, sorry, this is the last one A. Dispense, dispense, dispense it into the WPC chamber. Then positive pressure. Bubble mixing. Second, measuring. Measuring is so simple that we only need a negative pressure and open the valve 27, then counting finish. After that, we do discharging. Discharging is easy. We use diluent and clean the tubes and then to do the drainage and that's all. But we need a diluent to do the back tubes of the WBC chamber. Uh, we clean here, clean the chamber, and then clean the tubes, clean the tubes here, and clean the tubes here. See, now it's cleaning. Clean the aperture, also clean the aperture, and then the liquid will go to the, this chamber, then drainage. For the RBC, and the PID measurement channel. Principle is same, impedance method. Parameter, RBC, MCV, RDW, and the PID. Actually, uh, some more, like, uh, you know, uh, PID, PLC, and uh, PL, PLCC, and the PLCR, some, some more parameters, not only PRT. And the reagent is only diluent. Dosing, mixing, measure, cleaning, and the waste discharge. So this is the, the hydraulic system. So when we are going to do the bubble, uh, RBC counting, firstly, we need a diluent, right? So similar like the WBC, we get the diluent from the container and uh, dispense it 
and dispensing into the RPC chamber. Remember, the valve head is off. Power is off, and then the D1 can pass it by here. Valve 7 is off, but the valve 4 is on. So, sample. Where is the sample from? From the RPC chamber, right? Then the sample syringe will we we dispense the sample into RPC chamber. After that, mixing. Mixing, we also use positive pressure. Okay, bubble mixing. Similar like the WPC coming. So after that, measurement. Measurement is counting and the cleaning. We only need a negative pressure and once negative pressure is applied, counting finish it. So you can see, just the negative pressure is here, counting finish it. Then cleaning. Firstly, drainage. Second, use the diluent. to clean in the chamber again. Okay, clean now clean the back tubes. Then finish. Number seven, power source and the waste discharging module. So firstly we need to find out uh, the power source. What is the power source? So by opening the valve uh, 29 and uh, pump, this is the pump, right? Then to build the pressure. Second, so we are using a negative pressure, remember, we are using negative pressure and a waste discharge mode for swap, defer, WBC, RBC, and the pressure chamber. All of them have to do the discharging. So this is the negative pressure, negative pressure chamber discharging. Then positive pressure charge, uh, discharging. Swap discharging. Differ chamber discharging. WBC chamber discharging. So you can think about why there are two valves, there are two ways for discharging. For what? Why? You can try to answer this question. Then RBC chamber discharging. And uh, waste discharging for pressure chamber okay number four is the, our hardware system so here is an overview of our hardware system like uh, you can find there are many kind of boards connecting to the rear panel panel means the board so sometimes we, we call it uh, a rear board, rear board. So the m main control panel is the main board. Driver panel is the driver board. And the laser driver board and the optic uh, amplifier board. This is the front, front board. And the other valves and other wiring devices like the motor valves and the sensors also connect into the rear board reagent testing board and auto load board so you can find one two three four five six seven totally seven boards connecting to the rear board so one by one we are going to introduce them first one main board where, where is it it's the so we have to open the top so we have open the top uh, board, uh, the share, top the top share, 
and the left shear and uh, we can see this board we can see the main board and the driver board here so this is the interface interface to the rear board and the three part digital analogic uh, digital conversation uh, uh, circuit and this is an analogic circuit so digital analogic and uh, conver uh, convention convention so that means they need to uh, do in the uh, uh, that means totally four parts one two three four and for the main board, the voltage of the digital part is 3.3, 2.5, 1.8, 1.2. <coughs> for what? For supply the power for for the FPGA, MCU, and or some some others, or for the ARM ARM CPU. Okay. And the logic, the voltage is always high, five volt and. Uh, and uh, 12 volt and uh, for the WBC signal the upper for this group is for the WBC signal and this is for the RBC signal here is the optical signal HGB signal impedance signal ADC means uh, Analogic and the digit digital convention, and uh, here is the net IC FPGA. FPGA is for controlling the hydraulic system, like the valves, pumps, uh, and it it is yeah. Arm is for the controlling yeah, for the communication and some calculating and uh, controlling yeah. number three there are some important uh, indicators on the main board so in case you don't know what's going on with this main board we can check the output by indicators only so for example D17 green light on means normal that means the voltage is here and the working normally and uh, the 20 green light on means the uh, this voltage is normal the 21 22 the 46 and the 48 the two are most important why they are for the arm board and the FPGA board and uh, they must be flashing remember the status is not always on and always off they must be flashing flashing means on and off and very quickly so now you know how to do uh, so when should we replace a new board from where just from the indicators when you find the D46 is not flashing okay the issue is clear we have to replace this main board and if you find some other indicators is not on maybe it's off we have to replace the main board okay we not we are not recommend to replace the CPU or maybe some uh, resistance or replace some capacity or something uh, small parts no we don't recommend to do that we recommend to replace all next is the driver board so w why we need a driver board driver the uh, pumps motors and uh, and some uh, sensors so okay so these are valves driving module and these are this is FPGA power, FPGA. Okay. These are motor driving. If you found some burnt for the valves or the pump, we have to replace this board. But before we replace the board, before we replace the driver board, we must replace the valve 
or replace the pump. Why? Think about it. The bo the quality of the main the circuit board is very good. So why it burnt? Actually, that burnt is caused by the shortage, by the cables, by the valve, or by the motor. So what we should do? What so what? Which one should we replace first? Of course, we must replace the valve and the motor first, then replace the driver board. Otherwise. Let that shortage still there, and we cause the driver board burnt again. So it's it's meaning it's useless to replacing the driver board only. We have to replace valves or motors first. Okay. This is the optic. So where is the driver board? It's here, just under the main board. The function is for communication with the main board, driving the safety motor and the linear motor, and the pump controlling the pump, valve driver, and the preheating, and also controlling the position sensors. So when you find the something alarm, maybe the the sensor alarm out of place or fail to do the fail to return to the initial position. The last uh, situation, last uh, uh, board is the driver board we have to replace. So this is the rear board. You can see this is just like uh, work as a connector hub. You can find all the connectors installed in this board. So like the valves, like the pumps. And like uh, the main board and the and the driver board, totally there are seven boards connecting to this board, so a lot. Yeah. So this is the function for each. From the auto loader, reagent close board, and the indicator board, reagent close board and uh, auto loader board for updating preamplifier board laser driver board HGB unit and uh, this is the status of the voltage you can see the voltage is, is normal if they all of them are on zap zap means what? zap means for burning Burning the aperture to clean itself. So when machine alarm, aperture clock clotting, this zap will work. And uh, so each counting, you will hear the sound. That sound is for zapping. Z you can hear this sound. Z means zapping. And this is the power supply for analogic and the digital power supply. AD input and uh, the temperature sensor, reagent detecting sensor, opto copper J9 and J10 is for opto copper and uh, J9 temperature sensor. Next, next is also the voltage to the auto loader board and the floater sensor. These four connectors for motors and these for air pump, liquid pump, and a heat control. And this one is for the voltage. Network is at the back and the fan indicators. So, okay, so in case you have, you don't know where is the, where is the connector. Okay, you can go to the level B chaining materials and uh, find the right connect connector to do troubleshooting. You can replace the, you can check the voltage or check the cable connection from here. As I as I introduced, uh, we also have a short way. We ha we also have a shortcut to do troubleshooting. By what? 
by LED indicators. So here we have five indicators for for the input of the voltage. Five voltage, ten voltage, twenty four voltage, and then you can see the LED should be on. If you one of it is off, something wrong off the this board. So we have to replace it. So next 4.7 this is the auto load board it's easy to understand this board is to control in the auto loader auto loader is um, there are many sensors many motor and uh, many in, uh, uh, many in, uh, uh, physical physical structure so let's let's introduce one by one the left one is the software debugging. Software debugging. That means this auto loader have a software, and uh, actually you can you can say it can work independently. Why? This software can uh, can upgrade in separately. And uh, here is the software debugging. Here is the power supply, motor driver, two motors. That means two motors, and uh, loading. And unloading motor, opto couple detecting signal input, and the position detecting signal input. This is a position, position uh, sensor. And also, this is the barcode scanner. What it means barcode scanner part? This is the inbuilt barcode. So if we have if we have this scanner, machine can work. Uh, can scan the barcode and then upload the download and upload the data from the list server. Okay, where is this board? Yeah, when we open the right door, and we you can you can see this box, and open this box, open the share. You can find this board. Next, four point eight. This is the power supply. So where is the power supply? We it's at the back of the machine. There are five screws here, and when we disconnect them, we can pull out this power supply. So what are output for the for the power supply? Here are they. Totally five cables, five cables for the power supply. One, two, three, four, five. Number one. This is one hundred and ten voltage. For what? For zapping. And remember this is not a DC but AC. So you so when we do the measuring, we we using the multimeter, right? So we use the AC to do measuring. And this here is the DC. 12 voltage, but for analogic power, 5 voltage, red and black is 5 voltage for digital power. And uh, here, number 4, is some voltage for the auto loader. So when you find the auto loader is not working, maybe something wrong from here. Okay, the number 5, and you can see the voltage is 12 and 24. Below for the valves and the pumps. Next, number 4.10, this is the laser driver board. Laser driver board, we also need the power. Power for, for what? For the laser. And very stable voltage. And here is the, to the laser head and to laser to the rear board. So this is the input, this is the output. This board we call it laser driver board. Where is it? We must. Uh, we have to open the optical assembly. Uh, optical system assembly. Then you can see. Uh, you can see this board, and we can do replace it. But generally, uh, we recommend replace all. 4.11 this is a pre amplifier board 
So actually, we also we we cannot place uh, separately, but we can do the connection cable connection before the placing. Number four point twelve. This is the reagent detecting board. So you can see the function from here for reagent detecting means what. Uh, means uh, if the reagent is empty, so you can see some air bubble we are passing by the sensor, right? So that's one, that's two, that's three. Once the bubble is passing by, machine will alarm. And uh, this, this uh, uh, resistance is for doing the calibration. Uh, you can find our document uh, to do calibration. Uh, please get it from our the my robot or from our FTB. Here is the sensor. The upper one is the positive pressure sensor. Lower one is the vacuum pressure sensor. And the one at the left, this is the shift flow sensor. And then this is the pressure output and the reagent detective signal. So the connection it should be uh, should be good. And uh, when you find the pressure problem cannot be solved, sometimes we also have to check this board. Yeah, check it if it's bent or not. Is it, it, broken or burnt or some something error? And for the if machine have the false alarm of the air bubble, we have to do the calibration or cleaning, cleaning the sensor or replace the tube or some more. Number four point uh, thirteen. That is the IF card reader board. So this board is also the independent board with the software, and uh, we and if we cannot scan it, we have to replace it. But the first, before that, we recommend to do the self test. So when we do the, doing this installation, remember the. The site should be where should be installed correctly. Okay. There's a short, there's a f uh, there's a faster way to do the troubleshooting of this board by the D six indicator. This indicator must always blinking. If not blinking, something wrong. Maybe the cable connection is not good. Maybe the software version, or maybe some uh, something wrong of its board. Okay. Indicator board. This is the light for the alarm. And uh, also there's uh, in this board, this board is the auto auto board. There's a key for the auto long auto run key. And uh, alarm you can hear alarm from this board. Next is the auto run keyboard. Okay, reserved and one is auto run key. You can replace. You can exchange the two key for emergency purpose. Just uh, take it out and uh, move it to here. Number five. Maintenance. For the maintenance, uh, actually we have the SOP, and uh, that is our service kit. So in that service kit, uh, by now at the moment we have DH thirty six service kit and the DH fifty service kit and the DH seventy six service kit. So now you can purchase them from us, and the latest service kit is yearly. Uh, yearly uh, replacement. So what to do before maintenance, during maintenance, and after maintenance. So I I, I think uh, the SOP is much better than maintenance here. But uh, whatever, I will give you a brief introduction here. Make a schedule. You know. Uh, Actually, uh, maybe our engineer they they visit the hospital not uh, once per year. Once per year is the minimum. 
maybe some uh, engineer they visit the uh, place uh, monthly or maybe se seasonally or ha um, or visit the hospital per year every sorry half year every half year right so um, before visiting we must make a schedule so what what are cities you are going to visit city a and the city b and uh, we should uh, call, we should call uh, doctors uh, doctors uh, maybe visit the hospital to do um, maintenance uh, this, this is free of charge right we are not charging for them uh, just uh, just on the basis of our service commitment so uh, when we sign when we doing a contract service contract we promised that we are going to visit your hot place and uh, maybe once per year or maybe twice per year whatever we follow in the service commitment uh, by contract so call a customer and record the issues uh, they met and the requirement why we have to call them because sometimes maybe they or they already have the problem but we don't know and so we need to bring something like service kit like the valves pumps or maybe anything or maybe a I've card or maybe agent or maybe anything uh, we should prepare right and uh, Google the customer or the customers address and also we can contact some customer along the list uh, along the list one then we can do the service uh, in one time second prepare prepare preparation before departure this this is the tours kit for the engineer in from DMI multimeter and some uh, some uh, screwdriver and this one what's that this is the anti-static wrist and the needle tie non dust screws service kit tweezers anti-static uh, brush this one is also very important for cleaning the dust for do the dusting needle nose pliers tying this is the di diagonal diagonal pliers and the tie. Okay, this 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 one is the anti-static brush for do the dusting. So if you need a list from DMI, uh, we can we we can send you the list. Okay. Or if necessary, you can order the from DMI. Okay, this is the parts. Uh, now we take everything out so what are they uh, common parts like the valves at the minimum you should have one of each for the valve pinch valve small two way small three way big two way big three way if 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 you have some more three way a small valve should be more maybe you can make it uh, three pieces for each then better then your engineer can can visit the hospital otherwise wasting time for what for waiting for the papers or go back to the office and uh, come back to hospital again or next time the customer will be getting crazy and you and we we also losing business why we we are not supplying their backup machine right and the agent is not uh, not using so we are losing the um, sample orders so that's not good also the isolation room and uh, the swap and the connectors o limbs L these one are included uh, in the service kit so you can get them from service kit and then some the waste uh, waste uh, cap uh, assembly and the uh, diluander cap assembly this one is one year's warranty, remember, not two years warranty. And this is the tool bag, brushes. So what's the function for the syringe and the, the tube? For back flush, the aperture manually. And inside we will take some diluent. This is the glue. Uh, we use the glue to do the oiling and to do something 
and uh, this is screwdriver and there's another tools these tools we use to open the to 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 change to replace the WBC chamber and RBC chamber okay so tweezers this is the tweezers and the, this is the belt and the needles uh, sorry the needle ties this is the non dust cross and also we have uh, we need to do doing the oil yearling right so we we have to do the oil yearling for some motor part or for the guider rail some more so this is the demand um, moment one of the topic of the law is demand topic totally there are 20 20 uh, uh, totally there are 20 times demand moment for for make our business for make our uh, engineers life much comfortable so this is why demise domestic service has been win so much applause let's express one of their secret this is the tour bags in the tour bags not only tours but also basic and the usual spare parts and the service kit, also service kit. Proper jazz. This is the D my jazz. When we when our engineer wearing this D my jazz, the doctor will feel satisfied and they will thinking that the D my distributor are very professional. They are well trained. They are, they must be qualified. They must be already passed the training by manufacturer. So that's why since this year we have online training and online exam, online uh, qualify. Uh, we have level C training, level B training, and also level A training. Level A mostly are troubleshooting and uh, practice, but the level B we should uh, we should know the principle we should know the principle and we should know the some common solution right and the work card this is the work card for so for your company for the distributor you you also should have very good uh, work card so when you arrive at the hospital the first thing is to present your work card that you are uh, let, that is also one of the way to approve to to make our doctor uh, to convince our doctor okay and uh, <coughs> and in, and in China in our domestic uh, market the doctor can check the level can check the degree of the engineer there is a barcode at the back so the doctor can scan the barcode to to do the verification if this engineer is from manufacturer or maybe from competitors so let's uh, maybe in future you also can see the right way to, to do a good management for engineer so so that's why the work card is also very useful Number two, during the maintenance, have to do. So okay, during the maintenance, here are some uh, inspect. We have to check the environment, temperature, humidity, voltage, placement, like, and also check the log fire. Uh, why we check log fire? Because. Um, Maybe there are some alarm, but the operator they they forget it. There are too many operators. Maybe someone say this problem, someone say that problem, but they but the actually the best one is the service engineer to have to check the, all the details and find all the alarms. If they are seriously, we need to do a, another training for the operators. Okay, and also check the samples test before and uh, if the scattergram is normal we, we we can we also can check some uh, scattergram for the view and uh, check the performance so we generally we recommend to do the qc 
That is daily QC. So the engineer will check the tender of QC. If they are doing correctly, if they are doing, if every day they are doing the um, background, repeatability, and the QC. So next is the power of the analyzer. So when we doing so after after engineer of the hospital uh, and uh, he going to do the maintenance, make sure machine is power off. Then start to do it. Uh, this is the isolation room chambers inspection. So okay. Uh, we have to check the isolation in chamber one by one. This is the this is the isolation room for the swab, isolation room for the diva chamber, isolation room for the WBC chamber and the RBC chamber. They have to be replaced, but uh, by uh, at least yearly. Tube is inspection some tube is very dirty like the light tube and uh, some small valve connection tube and the uh, big valve connection tube and also the air filter and uh, the pinch valve elastic tube this tube and also the membrane of the pump frankly speaking we no need to replace the liquid pump we only replace these tubes and uh, consumables yearly by service kit. You can find all of them in the service kit. Next one is the counting chamber maintenance. Uh, we will clean the rust and the blood clot of the titanic tube. Where is the titanic tube? They are, they are just uh, inside the WBC and RBC box. So when we open it, we can do the cleaning of them. Next is clean the inner wall of the of the bus of the both chamber after the drainage first we drainage and clean inside by what by cleanser push and pull the cleanser slightly uh, with syringe to clean the aperture but remember when we doing these steps make sure slowly. So slowly, why? Because the tube will be brushed, and um, the tube and then the cleanser will cleanser will uh, go to a anywhere, everywhere. So maybe it's very uh, risky. So that's why we are saying it should be slowly, slightly, and uh, and uh, to do this job, to do this. Thing. The tube it shouldn't be too long. The tube it should be very short, and then push. So when we doing the pushing, uh, one hand, our left hand should be uh, hold the tube, and then push from here. If you are, if you, if you want to make it much more safe, we can use the needle tie to fasten, fasten uh, here, and here. Next. It's the diva chamber maintenance. For the diva chamber maintenance, we clean the all connectors on the diva chamber and uh, clean the top by using this cotton tip. And uh, in firstly, we clean outside the upper and then clean inner. Next is the optical component maintenance. So what we have to do? Uh, we using the uh, syringe, but remember laser is uh, off. Sorry, the laser is must be turned off. Machine must be turned off, and then we open the laser, and then pushing the pushing the cleanser into this uh, into the laser into the flow cell. You can see this is the diagram. So we pushing, we pushing the pushing the cleanser. And the cleanser will go back into the diva chamber. 
then clean the outer wall by what? By non-dust glue from our service kit. But not too often, just uh, nearly. So next uh, is the sampling assembly maintenance. That is for the um, uh, apply the lubricating oil to the slide layer. So, uh, but before that, uh, we can clean it. We we clean in the dust, and after that, we uh, apply the lubricating oil. Next, uh, we add the glue to the connector of the motor cable. So why we we add the glue here? Because maybe after one years uh, moving, this connector we are a little loosen. So we use the glue to fix it. The last one is uh, what kind of uh, what kind of grease we are using. You can find this brand from market, and uh, it is made in Germany. So you can buy it. Try to buy it from local. Uh, we cannot uh, send it to you by courier because this oil is very dangerous, uh, and it is forbid forbid it. It is forbidden to be to transport it. So this is uh, oiling. Then others is sampling the assembly, uh, sampling assembly maintenance and clean the prop, uh, inner, inner and out, outer. So this is the swab. We have to take it out and clean the bottom and uh, put it this the prop and clean the inside. This is outside. Syringe assembly. So after one year, uh, we will place the O-ring for the syringe. Why? Because there are too many dust here. Uh, O-ring is broken like this. So sometimes this mat also will be broken. So if possible, we also have to replace the mat. The mat. You can see this is the very serious. So we have to clean the O-ring. Otherwise, the background will be not good. So when you find the background, background cannot always higher than, than the standard. So we can find the reason. Generally, the reason is from the syringe. Uh, this is the syringe assembly maintenance. Take out the syringe assembly and remove the back cover. Clean the slide layer and the screw rod and apply some oil on the slide layer and the screw rod. Restore the assembly and perform the safe test around 10 times. Clean the dirty stu stuff and then and lubricate them. So that means we have to lubricate uh, twice. First one is for cleaning. Second, remove the oil and uh, and uh, do it again. Do it again. Next is the dust remover and cleaning. So we can clean the uh, all opto couplers of the machine. Why? There may be some dust, and it will block this sensor. So we use the non-dust uh, non-dust uh, close close to clean the sensor and clean the main board with anti-static brush like this clean the fan near the area clean the cover of the machine there, there will be some blood here so this is the SOP but, you, but, but maybe you are thinking it's not uh, perfect don't worry we have the service kit you can get the service kit instructions then you can then you can have the four steps after what should we do we should check we should check the performance of the machine like uh, repeatability uh, we will check the CV and uh, we have to check the uh, repeatability of the control 
check the schedulegram and check the control uh, check check the result of the control all of them should be in in control not out of control so before leaving there's one more thing we have to do make uh, the connection properly this is the this is the you can say uh, file A standard so the connectors cables connectors uh, is very tidy not out of place so you can see everything is proper you can see the lights is at the top and uh, the LAN cable the power cable and every cable is uh, well connected so check so we should generally we we do this support for our end user after that we will record the maintenance this is the this is the maintenance record so once we for example when we when we sign in the contract right that is yearly contract so every year we should visit this hospital once and uh, if we finish it, the maintenance we will write down okay uh, this day who did this maintenance and what he did one two three four this is an SOP standard F from uh, for everything we introduced uh, in this uh, in this chapter so here is the this is the record and after you finish it the doctor will do the signature here and this is the fill in the maintenance record including the date name of the engineer status of the machine and the purpose of the visit and if you have a new engineer for example maybe some engineer they they have internal adjustment so you can replace the business card so the doctor can call us um, directly number six is the most dif difficult one troubleshooting so what what's that we totally we have hydraulic uh, problems and hardware problems and the results related problems firstly hydraulic problems like HGB background voltage so what to do think, ab think about it do you remember do you still remember which chamber which module is calculating the HGB of course the WBC chamber so we go back so we found the relative parts for WBC counting WBC chamber and uh, HGB and uh, counter right so who will what will affect the HGB counting firstly diluent right we have diluent before and after and we, we must have sample right and we also need a sensor HGB sensor right and the chamber the chamber is not broken diluent should be in, inside and also and also we need to do an adjustment so when once this alarm comes uh, what we should we do we, we will check the gain setting should it be 4.5 more or less 0.5 this is the bias right second the diluent expired if the diluent is not good quality or get dirty of course HGB background will be abnormal and also WBC chamber is empty without any liquid inside so why it happened the, dilu the dispension problem right so we go back to the hydraulic system and find the right hydraulic so how it uh, how does this machine doing the dispension for for WBC chamber so we found the syringe found out the valves and try to do in the replacement also, if there are too many air bubble inside the WBC chamber, HGB also will not properly. And HGB module get dirty and get damaged. 
last is the waste water cannot be discharged. That's why. So it means overflowing, right? So what should we do? Here are the solutions. Go to this is the setting check. Replace the new diluent. The feeling, the feeling if it's empty, right? And then check the voltage. Then clean the inner wall, clean the outer wall, and uh, clean the HDB module. If the problem is still there, generally the problem is from the valves. This is the drainage valves, or the diluent dispensation valve. So one by one, we will check it from easy to difficult. Second, WBC and RBC closing. Actually, this is an alarm code. You, we, you can just send the alarm code to DMI robot, including the last one, HGB alarm. So in that DMI robot uh, file, you will find a very clear solution. So I'm not introduced too much. I just remind you, we doing the troubleshooting by what we learned today. Just like uh, the hydraulic system. So you, so we should know who, which one, which part is doing the counting. That is counting the WBC and RBC. So white alarm clock. What's the alarm principle? So you can get the alarm principle from the DMI robot fire. If machine is have this alarm, so generally this is a pro possibility. No diluent, upchair block it, ray book block it, and the bubbles along the upchair. Liquid flows through the upchair is unstable. External interface. So the solution for each of them. Okay. Check the different box, valves, the tubes, and the accessory way to the, this chamber. And also, we can try to do the manual cleaning, right? And this is the upchair problem. And the air bubble, we check the air bubble and the valve and the connector. Replace the valve for counting, for bubble mixing, discharging, isolation room chambers, respectively. Fix the sh shading cover. Replace it if it get rusty. Move the machine to another room. So this is, um, yeah, th this solution is not, uh, uh, how to say, not very detailed. But you can get the file from DMI robot. Next one is the voltage abnormal. So for the voltage machine, we are doing the test after doing the counting. So what to do? send the alarm code to DMI robot again. Then you will get a fire. But generally, the possibility is here. Same, a little similar like clock. Like the diluent, no diluent, diluent uh, experiment, block it, air bubble, yeah, and uh, particle is unstable. Main board or even main board. So you, we, can, we have to check the so one, two, three, four, five is similar like the last uh, uh, issue. So I'm not introduced too much, but for the num the last one, for the main board problem, what do we have to do? Replace the main board and uh, copy the gain setting. Remember these steps. Copy the original, uh, copy the gain setting value setting before taking it out. Uh, then copy the this value to the new main board. So we have to take a photo first. If not, we have to do the gain setting calibration. So number four is the WBC overflow. Overflow means it's leaking. So so you can you will see why it's leaking. Because of discharging is not properly. Problem may maybe from the pump, from the waste container, or maybe from the tube folded folded the tube or valve twenty one, valve twenty five, and the filter isolation room and all chamber itself right so step by step we do cleaning check if the tube folded check waste container is maybe is, is broken replace the isolation room while valves pumps and check the connectors 
Sometimes you will find the here this tube is folded, and also replace valve eight. Okay, some more. Wow, eight. Oh, okay, okay, this one is uh, different. Do not uh, check the. Do not check this. Uh, RBC overflow similar like WBC. Similar, similar. Why is similar? Why? Discharging problem. Discharging problem. Okay, discharging. So we have to check the pump and the tube. But uh, the difference is is only one tube. Only one pump and uh, 26 valve have to be checked. Next one, deeper chamber overflow. Also, w once you find the overflow problem, we have to check the di uh, discharging loot, like the pump, like the filter, and the waste tube. Swap leakage. Swap leakage is also similar. Swap and uh, block it. This is the isolation room and the valve 19 and the pump 1 and then waste container. So, one by one, check the steps from here, from here, from the waste tank, waste container to the swap. Positive pressure abnormal. So why machine align positive pressure error? Generally, we should know how how di how does our machine doing the positive pressure test? Where is the power from? From air pump. It will be pumping air from air filter into this chamber. So we have to check. What do we have to check? Check the tube. Check the air filter. Check the valve and check the sensor. Sensor, sensor. Where's the sensor from? This sensor is. This is the sensor. Uh, to the. Um, okay, here is. Uh, this is the sensor. Look at it here. This is the sensor connecting to the reagent detective board. Okay. Is the vacuum pressure. So we also have to know how does machine doing the vacuum pressure from where? From this chamber. This is the negative pressure chamber. And uh, where is the power from? Power is from liquid pump. It will be a pumping out the air or liquid out from this chamber passing by the valve 29 and then to the pump and to the waste container. But also we have to other place have to close like this valve have to close this valve have to close and the sensor should be good quality this valve close this valve close where valves close where valves close where so if machine maybe one of valve is not closed properly step test will be failed so we have to check we have to replace many valve before removing we can try to fold it the tube manually if if when we uh, so okay so when we do the self test for example maybe the leakage is from valve 24 right so we fold so we folded the tube and then self test successful vacuum pressure self test successful that means this problem this valve must be leaking and then we don't need to check other tubes so this is the tips of how to do in, how to do the quick self test. But whatever you also can find the DMI robot file from our uh, uh, FTP or from you can add DMI robot as friends and get the collect PDF file. Next one is the flow cell clock. So what's the principle? Why machine alarm flow cell clock? By what? By this sensor, this flow sensor. This sensor we are, we are, we are given given this flow cell alarm. So, 
maybe the sensor problem or maybe some place is blocked right so why to block it where is the place to block it block it may happen in the flow chamber flow cell or maybe the valve 18 or maybe the tubes or maybe some syringe valve 10 valve 11 so all these things okay this is the blood clot in the flow cell valve 18 tube t uh, 90 this is the tube and the sensor damage it so we try we replace them one by one to solve the problem second is the hardware problem what is hardware problem that means the hydraulic system is good maybe the problem mechanic or some board like network disconnected how to solve this problem first we check the the possibility is maybe for an IP setting or computer change it the network card of computer more function there is something wrong of the link cable link cable is easy to check right we can replace a new link cable then check it again next is the shading cover short circuit with the machine with the machine cover there is something wrong with the main board or rear board or power supply so one by one we replace it yeah it's right it's not a smart way but if we have a spare pass it will it help us to save the time right we 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 it's not allowed to spend too much time at the customer side in, in china maybe less than three hours we have in, we must solve the problem in in three hours so if we have enough spare parts we we can solve it so bef so that's why uh, spare parts the safety stock is very very important for our engineer otherwise they can do nothing just wasting time wasting money and uh, wasting the budget so when we when we are going to do the uh, visiting hospital, we will call we will call them. What's the problem? W uh, what's the alarm code? Network not working. Network not working. So I must bring some board for for emergency. I will bring at least a main board for emergency. And the solution for each possibility uh, is check the IP config. IP uh, IP setting subnet mask and we try to pin try to pin the host so okay and replace the link cable check here here is very this this possibility this solution maybe not too much engineer know check if the chambers is overflow why the overflow will cause network disconnection because of because of the leakage and it will cause the grounding problem so that's why connection is not good machine will alarm sometimes it's okay sometimes not it depends of if machine is is leaking okay so we have to solve this leaking first so generally we when we go into visit this hospital we will ask the end user to open the right door and open the shading box of the WBC and the RBC and uh, check if the box is open or not and also we will check the condition of the main board check the indicators if the indicators is on or not like uh, oh, sorry should be flashing D20, D4, uh, D46 and the D48 must uh, flashing if not Try to press the reset key and uh, if still not good then replace the main board last is the doing the dusting and the replace power supply and the rear board but then uh, normally no need to replace the power board and the uh, power supply and the rear board next is I've cut scanning failure this problem is uh, quite common for the for some new installation because they because they are using some uh, 
using some uh, the, the already, already scanned uh, the used the used card. Be, you know when we finish the scanning, actually we have to uh, separate the name from separate the old one out of new one, right? So if some operator they mixed uh, mi uh, they mixed the uh, new and old, this problem we are very common. Machine cannot uh, scan successful. So here are possibilities. Uh, maybe the information is not matching. Wh why this happened? For example, uh, there are less one, less L, uh, less three and less two, right? When we replacing, when we doing the scanning, we use less two and uh, scanning for the less three. Of course, it will be fared. So matching, make sure select the last three and we we do the scanning for last three card. Second, the setting, the position should be very good. You do you remember uh, the place is at the front is in the front of IF card, right? So we scan that place, and then uh, it will. And you will after five minutes, sorry, after five seconds, three to five seconds, you will hear a sound. Did means successful. Third is the MCU information is missing or not matching. You can find this one. This is wrong. This is the software version for the IF with the MCU. If this software is zero point zero, something wrong of this board. Software is lost. Last solution, last possibility is the IF card. It's damaging. So what to do? <coughs> this is solution. We will check if it's used or not used. Second, we do the safe test. We can do the setting. S third, try to upgrade the software. This upgrade is the same software version. For example, the original one is a ten point four or ten point zero. We do upgrading again. So the software we are uh, we are doing the upgrading for the for the for the IF MCU only. We no need to upgrade to a new version. Just to upgrade to the same software version. So last one is replace the IF card readable. Next one. Next one is uh, for the no less one, less two, less three issue. Possibility. There are air bubbles inside the tube, so we have to solve the air bubble first. Second, optocouple get dirty, so we have to clean it right. Third, the tube get oxy oxidizing. We have to let me replace the tube or cleaning. Third, fourth, voltage of the board changed. If there comes a new board, we need to do an adjustment before install. Um, after install it. Last one is the board is damaged. We have to replace a new one. So uh, don't worry. You can get this file from our demand robot. Then you can do the adjustment property very easy uh, by what you can see the you can see the standard here uh, at the adjust the point and the test point test point means what means uh, we using the multimeter and uh, get uh, the point the positive the red red pen to the test point the black pen connecting to the Ground. This is the ground. Each hole is the ground. You can you can put a screwdriver, a screw here, and the measure of voltage should be one point four, one point five. Okay. Let me do the calibration. Next, optical system temperature out of working range. First, uh, environment temperature is not good. Second, 
the sense of heating uh, unit is damaged. So what to do? Firstly, is we have to open the air condition, right? To make sure the temperature is working in a good temperature. For long 15 to 30 degree. Second solution, try to restart the machine. And then third is to do a calibration, but not too many, just a little, just a little. Last one is replace a new optical system SMB. Next is the temperature uh, of the diver bus out of range. Same, same uh, situation, but the second one is different. If there is no diluent inside the chamber, machine will alarm temperature. So we have to check the dispension of the diluent. Otherwise, uh, then we uh, we we can check the maybe some valve or syringe is not doing the dispension right, and then doing the calibration and then the replace the diver chamber. The last solution is to to do the replacement. Next one, mix motor fail to return to its initial position. Most the possibility is the sensor is dirty. Second, the cable or itself. Third is the belt of the motor. And the fourth is the cable or motor itself damaging. Last is the auto load board. So we just doing the cleaning, doing the replacement, the cleaning, replacement, replacement. And here we solve the problem. This is one of the damage like this. Cable damage it. Sensor is good, but the cable is damaged, or connection, or maybe the motor, or maybe the cable, or maybe the motor, or maybe just the dirty here. So we follow in the steps. And here, last steps, the place in the auto board or driver board. Number seven, did you and the syringe busy or time out? So why this? Why this problem happen? The screw lot or the sliding bar is too dry and sometimes attached to make huge resistance. Means the piston cannot move up. It's too dirty or too dry. The inside is too dry. So maybe the o limb is damaged. Once the o limb is damaged, it will block the movement of the piston. Third, the opto opto copper behind is dirty means the sensor is dirty and the cables damaged so we have to do replacement fourth syringe motor cables and the motor itself damaged and the last is the error together with uh, maybe that means this is just one of the alarm so we have to fix the previous alarm first solution I already introduced replaced as we introduced here. Generally, Olin, most po possibility is the Olin. We have to replace. So that's why we recommend our engineer to have more service kit and then replace it yearly. Next is the counter trigger abnormal. So what to do? Why it happened? The screw on the counter trigger get rusty. This is rusty and dirty. We do cleaning, and uh, if if the screw on the trigger extent is too long to make huge resistance, the screw is too long. Is also not good. The balls inside the sliding layer get rusty, so we have to take it out. And uh, this one is too rusty. Is not good. And uh, when if this uh, trigger, you know there are two kinds of trigger uh, in our auto loader. If this is the plastic one, uh, we have to replace. Uh, we cannot do adjustment. If it's the uh, stainless one, 
then we can try to make the angle a little higher to solve this alarm. So this is the solutions. We have to do this assemble and then cleaning and uh, make it uh, move much more smooth. You can see this is very dirty, so we have to make it uh, much more smoothly. This assemble and cleaning. Test the sample uh, in AWB mode for several times and restore this part to make sure the machine is running properly. If necessary, uh, we, adjust, uh, we suggest to do a self-test for the autoloader. Last uh, is the result related uh, problem. First one, abnormal background. So why it happened? Reagent, hydraulic system, air bubble, and external inter interference. So this problem is, uh, is not, uh, we, have, we have to find uh, which parameter is abnormal. So relay, so let's suggest the first one, uh, replace the reagent, prime more times, and check if it back to normal. Second, performance clean the soaking. Clean the soaking is very useful and uh, for daily, monthly, or seasonally, or yearly, or every time when we have uh, trouble, we do clean the soaking. Cleaning the chambers manually, especially the aperture. Check if there is a bubble inside the tube of syringe. Replace the O-ring of the syringe or the syringe uh, body assembly. Check if the shading cover loose and fix it. Move to another room if there is a big power machine nearby or big noisy. Yeah, this is uh, external interference and the replace the main board. So this is of a normal background. Next is no scattergram. There's a sample uh, go into the flow cell. There's no, no sample, okay. No sample, sorry, no sample, then no scattergram. Second, the optical cable lo loosen or get damaged. So we have to check the cable connection for the laser. Last is the main board get damaged. So what to do? We, we check the sample. The part of below deeper chamber should be replaced to check. An isolation room, valve, city, even the tubes and the connectors. This, this, uh, this solution is to solve the first uh, possibility. Why no samples go to the chambers? So we have to check them, uh, check the enter pass and uh, to, uh, to find the, the 40 parts. Check if the tube from the shift flow syringe to a different chamber and replace the valve 12, pinch valve uh, valve 22 and check if the tube of sample flow syringe is connected. So we have to check uh, some valves related to the sample dispensation as we just as we introduced for the hydraulic system. So okay so you have uh, for the Q&A uh, Later, I will I will send you another Q and A. This one. Uh, this is the revision recording. Okay. So thank you. Today we um today we overtime working. Thank you.